Bray CEO Bill Magnuson joins us live at Post 9 to break down the run-up and the White House's new AI guidelines released late last week. Bill, great to have you here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. You know, I think it's important to mention those guidelines, they're voluntary. All the companies voluntarily saying they'll follow these guidelines. I want to ask you about them. Uh, the guidelines, do you think it's important to have these guidelines this early in the AI story? And if you were to follow these guidelines, I know you weren't part of the meeting, yep. how would it impact your business? Yeah, I think that it's really helpful to have guidelines like this that really help set the tone for the things that are most important, uh, what we should really be thinking about, both as like a society uh, as well as as companies. And I think that when we look at them with Braze, you know, looking at transparency, you know, security, trust, these are clearly things that are really important to us in all of the product development that we do. And I would say that, you know, we're, we're more than happy to be in line with them. You know, you're hitting on something right now, trust. You have a lot of customer data, a lot of personal data. Um, it's first-party data, though. So you, you'd say there's a big distinction when it comes to that and AI. Well, so the first-party data world that we live in means that, in general, when we're working with customers, the places that we're delivering messaging to and that we're kind of rendering product experiences for customers are inside of their products. And so when we're acting, when we're using AI, it's on behalf of the customer, which means that it needs to respect things like brand voice, brand safety, um, you know, ensuring that uh, the hallucinations are not going awry and what have you. And, and that means that we have a heavy emphasis on, you know, brand safety and safety and transparency to begin with, you're not just alone in a private chatbot room, right? You're doing all this stuff in public. So give us a sense, generative AI in your business. We mentioned HBO is a customer, Burger King's a customer, the yep. parent company, restaurant brands, the general customer here. How do you put AI into the customer engagement platforms? How does it work for businesses like that that are very different? We're talking about a streamer and a hamburger shop. Yeah, yeah, so there's a few things. You know, first of all, I think that uh, the use of AI, generative AI in particular, as like a muse or as an inspiration is extremely effective to help guide creativity and help bring out new ideas about how to engage with customers and how to really create content that resonates with them. You know, we focus a lot on the downsides of hallucination, but really hallucination can be a big benefit in the creative process. And so I think that's one of the, the first major areas that especially cuts across them. You know, if you're gonna be running campaigns uh, that are going to help, you know, engage with customers, guide them through the product journey, expose them to new things that, um, you know, that they that they care about or that they didn't know that they wanted or what have you. A lot of the goals around marketing and engagement, um, you want to be creative. You want to resonate with them. You want to be personal. And so to take a marketer who has, you know, definitionally only lived one life and let them engage with what are increasingly global and diverse, like much more diverse audiences than we had before, when you can engage with people in every country around the world, currencies, all this cultural diversity, um, people that live in different places, are having different experiences, you know, to be able to have generative AI really help create better resonance with all those different groups of people, even when you're one small team trying to figure out the right marketing strategy to deploy, you know, that's a place where that hallucination turns into a really big positive. But you need to then still have the controls on top of it to make sure that brand safety and brand voice continue to uh, be respected. And I think that's where a lot of the safety and the transparency comes into play, even as we start to, you know, really figure out what these things are capable of.